Have you ever wondered why so much effort is being invested in getting populations prepared for emergencies, and yet when disasters strike, very few people are? For instance, how come disaster planners have been planning for a global pandemic for decades, and when the coronavirus began spreading, no one seemed prepared? Is there something we are missing? Well, yes. It's called disaster psychology. No, I don't mean the psychological or mental impacts of disasters, such as anxiety, stress, or PTSD. While this is a very important aspect of disaster planning and management, it has very little to do with disaster psychology. What I mean by the term disaster psychology is this, panic buying, or these people disobeying public health regulations, or these news pieces about the Tokyo Sarin attack in 1995. In other words, human behavior that affects disaster planning and management. Hello, my name is Dr. Mohan Bodas, and I am a researcher in the field of disaster psychology. I am dedicating my academic work in order to understand the way people perceive risks and the way they react to disaster risk use. Ample research has been done in an effort to understand human behavior in the context of emergency and disasters. Yet these aspects are often overlooked when decision makers engage in disaster planning. Let me give you some examples. Would you say that the Israeli public is ready for an armed conflict? After all, Israelis have been in the line of fire for decades. They should be prepared for such a threat, wouldn't they? Well, it turns out they aren't. Study after study, the data shows that Israelis delay preparedness behavior until the threat is real and imminent, leaving them vulnerable to any threat that may erupt unexpectedly or very violently. You are probably asking yourselves why. The answer is quite simple. Israelis want to live their lives and not worry about war just like any other person. They are so used to the risk that they become either indifferent to it or just resort to denial as an adaptive coping mechanism. Either way, they don't get prepared. You see, if emergency planners had taken this social psychology phenomenon into consideration, they would have adapted their efforts and avoided spending money on non-effective preparedness campaigns and ads. Take another example. Several experts have been calling in the past years for a paradigm change in the field of search and rescue. Did you know that up to 95% of people trapped underneath the rubbles following a major earthquake are rescued within the first 24 to 48 hours by family members, friends, or bystanders? In other words, laypersons? Understanding this, more and more countries are training the masses in light search and rescue skills to equip members of the public with the basic information they need to know on how to use a car jack or a metal rod to lift a block of concrete weighing a ton, for instance. What does this have to do with disaster psychology? Well, studies have shown that by going through this hands-on experience of saving lives, trainees are empowered and become more resilient. Moreover, people belonging to subgroups that are wrongly perceived as the weaker links of society seem to benefit the most from such trainings by increasing their self-efficacy and resilience. There are many more examples, but I bet you get the message. Disaster psychology is a major component of how crises play out. If we want to design better disaster plans, we must decipher the disaster psychology aspect of each risk. Human behavior is complex and difficult to predict, especially in circumstances of hardship, such as those presented during disasters and emergencies. If we wish to promote resilience and readiness, better coping strategies by people during crises, and especially if we wish to avoid unwanted behavior by some people during emergencies, we need to understand the way people perceive risks and react to disaster cues. There is much to be learned. Disaster psychology is an evolving field, striving to bridge the gap between disaster risk reduction plans and reality. You will find that disaster psychology is a crucial element in almost any situation of crisis management. Let's explore it together.